call the um, February Inlet and Beach Protection Board regular meeting to order. Um, agenda approval. Is there a motion to approve the ag agenda? I'll make a motion. Sorry. Second. Um, any comments or all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? That motion carried unanimously. Um, approval of minutes of the January 23rd, 2020 meeting. Um, is there a motion to approve the minutes? I make a motion to approve. Last second. Is there any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Okay, status of the beach, Alex and issues. Christy? Okay, um, in looking at our sand search, anybody that was here at the Board of Commissioners meeting this month probably heard David report this, but we had to find a new surveying company, or ATM did, as a subcontractor, so we're um, hoping to get the permits finalized by the end of April. As far as the AIWW crossing project, that project is complete. I took some pictures at the east end. So that's what's on your screen. This is looking back towards Lockwood Folly Inlet from the um, last access there at Amazing Grace. And then this is looking back towards Town Hall. Project looks good and all the heavy equipment's been removed. Um, I think pipes were taken off the beach by Monday and there was some heavy equipment at the beginning of the week but that's gone. We do plan to get sand fence and vegetation established as soon as possible. And just a reminder that the Holden Beach Renourishment Association will assist with some of the cost for sand fence. Um, as far as UNCW goes with an update there, they obtained Lockwood Folly and Shalote Inlet satellite imagery for a number of years from the Corps. One graduate student is compiling them in GIS and soon will begin the coastal digitizing process, the inland analysis portion of the project will take the longest and will likely continue at least through the end of March. They hope to provide preliminary results once the analysis is complete. And as far as the vegetation portion of the project that they were working on, they've obtained imagery of Holden Beach from 2018 and a separate graduate student is working on classifying the imagery. They will not be sampling vegetation on the ground until closer to summer and ATM provided some assistance in regards to GIS data for the five management zones that's covered in your plan. Did they reach out to, can I ask questions? Did they reach out to ATM themselves or was that, they reached you guys it, facilitated We facilitated that. that. Um, the the university is doing a good job of asking questions of me when they need something and sure then we we're facilitating contact with ATM. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So um, you're, you're happy with progress? And I think it was, honestly, I think it was a little slow in the beginning and I was a little discouraged, but it seems that they're progressing now. I really hope that they finish before the end of this budget year because I think with costs that we're going to have next year as far as other projects that I hope we don't have to carry this project into next fiscal year. Um, it sounds like they're on track to do that, but I do hope that that happens. <coughs> Um, did, it was that all the questions on UNCW? We received and signed project worksheets for Florence and Michael. Staff has submitted the first monthly report on each storm as required for worksheet approval with worksheet approval. So what that means is now that we have approved project worksheets at the beginning of every month before the tenth of the month, the town has to submit a report whether we're claiming anything for that month or not. So that's um, additional paperwork that's now going in. We received $177,437.96 for Irene. Um, this seems to be the closeout for this storm. And talking to the state, we may have to do another final inspection now that they've um, finalized their paperwork. But we're still waiting on a final payment for Matthew. And then in looking at Dorian, we met with the new project manager for all of these storms actually, but that's assigned with Dorian. 
We signed the damage description and dimension scope cost for Dorian regarding Cat G beach losses and our coastal engineers estimating $14,914,698 in losses out the depth of closure. That's what I had for our report. Um, does anybody have any questions? I just wanted to clarify for everybody because I think a couple of you had asked me what winter of 21 means. That's what David um, discussed in the last DOC meeting. And that would, what he means is it's not 2021, but it'd be 21 22, which is, um, is that correct, Christy? You asked me that in the agenda setting meeting, and I did ask him for clarification to make sure he and I were on the same page with an answer, and that's correct. Which, which, where are you talking about? Where there's a reference to winter he, of 21? Um, at the last BOC meeting, that's what David reported, that he expected the Florence Michael remediation to be um, that project he was looking at possibly, um, he said uh, winter of 21. And so then the question was, does that mean winter, does that mean 2021 20, or 21, 22? And he clarified that it meant 21, 22. Right. So like a year from, from the end of this year. Right. Almost two years. Right. Right. We need to allow for alternate bid years. Okay. Do you understand what she's saying about that? It's like, like when we did the Central Reach project, we got bids back. And um, if you waited a year, sometimes with projects, the bids come in lower just based on there being limited dredge plant and their availability. So sometimes if they can bid the year that you want to do the project and then the next year you get more favorable bid for a different year. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, before we moved on, move on from that, I wanted to do another little update real quick. Um, Mike, do you want to address your memo? Did everybody get that in their packet? Yeah, we can do that. Well, I'll do the um, MOA. Can meeting. I ask you just to hold on just a minute? I want to adjust that microphone so that maybe we don't get feedback. away to from the mics. Sorry, Mike, go ahead. Oh, okay. So I uh, um, I attended the um, long-term MOA meeting on the 19th of February in Newburgh. Uh, we got an update from Colleen Cordero. Uh, she is the Assistant Director of Water Resources for the state. And, um, you know, basically it was... Um, you know, she gave us an update on the, the, the Dare County Bridge um, that it's been, the $15 million has been paid for. Um, they've got nine people who are going to actively address the, you know, building the dredge for, dredge, for Dare County. And um, hopefully they're going to have that. Hopefully they, they're shooting for having the dredge available in two years. Um, she also, uh, talk to some extent on the coastal storm uh, damage mitigation fund. There's $11.5 million available in there for grants. Uh, the grants are not to exceed $2.5 million for any particular municipality's project, uh, which she brought up, she said, you know, said, if you do the math, she said that's 4.6 projects. So, uh, if, you know, if, the town or someone does have a project, uh, you know, the, the the information for the grants will be out on the 28th of February, due back by April 30th, and the awards for the grants will be uh, August 31st. 
uh, on the, uh, I think the last time that I went, I um, wrote about the dredge, main, the dredge maintenance management plan. And that's where they're getting, you know, this, these disposal areas, since the Corps has came out and said that, you know, <coughs> towns and municipalities and, and counties can't use core disposal areas anymore. Uh, it's going to, it, it, it's already become a project, uh, I mean, a problem. And so what, the, what they did, and they sent in all, they sent out information to all the towns and counties, and for them to send back their information as to where, you know, they could, there could be a disposal area uh, that's not used by the core. Uh, she's gotten all that information in from, from everyone. She's getting ready to put it into a format, and that'll be out, uh, you know, probably, I don't know, she was talking maybe three or four months to try to, to, try to get all, all that put together. Um, one important question, and, you know, that's, that's one of the, the, the things I really enjoy about these meetings is just going and listening to questions from other people, from other towns. And, uh, you know, with the disposal areas, <coughs> you know, there's, there's, if, you, if you look at the Sunset Beach project, you know, they had that dredge project set up, ready to go, and then the Corps changed their, changed their, their rook, you know, so they're where they could put the, the disposal, the stuff. And so that project went all to pieces, the cost went sky high because they're going to, they have to put it upland some, somewhere. Um, so the guy from Dare County, he brought up the, the question and he said, you know, you know, they're trying to get ahead of the curve and he said, you know, is, is well, people, you know, these towns and counties are going to have to buy property. And uh, uh, he said, you know, is there any, are there going to be any legislative, you know, information or any way that they're going to be able to help help these, these uh, communities to, to purchase land. And as of right now, there's nothing, he said there's nothing, any verbiage anywhere or anything that even resembles that the state or anybody's gonna help in purchasing any of the land. Uh, the Corps of Engineers spoke next. Um, Todd Horton was, the, he's, he's the chief of the waterways management, he was the first to speak. And once again, they did like, like they did in the last meeting. They came all the way down the coast showing all the inlets, all the places that they're currently dredged, that are in the need of dredging. Uh, it, it's amazing they, had, they, they, showed one, they showed one slide where uh, they had just dredged an inlet up toward the outer banks. And uh, that northeaster they came through, the week after, they went back and resurveyed it, and it filled off right, just filled right, right back up. And then he showed another one. He showed another one that they were getting ready to dredge, but after the northeaster, it cleared out, so they didn't have to dredge it. So, but uh, that's a really volatile area up there. Uh, Brendan Dooley, the shallow draft navigation manager. Uh, Spoke next, and he, you know, he he spoke some about our dredging project with, with Good Load Marine. Said that uh, there was quite a bit of sand taken out. Um, that the project at this time, that on this day, said the project was pretty much completed. The uh, Corps had done their assessment on the 18th of February, and uh, would do their survey. Would be, I mean, I'm, I'm sorry, the uh, survey would be done on, was done on the 18th. And their assessment would be done on the 19th. Uh, they did show a, they did have a schedule for all the all of the dredges, and uh, the merit is scheduled to return to the inlet April 1st through the 14th. Uh, there was still $311,000 in the fund to finish the merit job, and there will be no mobilization charge when the merit returns. Uh, he gave an update on the AIWW maintenance project for fiscal year. Uh, they include the Lockwood River Crossing, Lockwood Inlet Crossing, Shalot River Crossing, and the Shalot Inlet Crossing. Uh, they're going to, they'll issue the work in June of 2020, bids to go out in July of 2020, and award a contract in August 2020. Uh, and then the, the, the gentleman again talked about the, the dredges 
um, charges per hour. He did say that we would probably see a decrease in the in the cost of the merit coming up in the next year. Um, but they did not address where stand placement for lot. No, 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 no. Um, Christy, does the town need to ask for that sand? I don't know what the question was. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Um, uh, dredging for Lockwood Folly for this coming year. Um, we have sent a resolution forward and we continue to work with the Corps to let them know that we think that based on our report and analysis that was done that we should be the recipient via least cost method of disposal. And the fact that it fills back into the inlet faster if it's on the Oak Island side. They did mention that the, the Shalot sand will go to the ocean island. They did say that. They want to get in between Oak Island and Holman Beach about that. <laughs> they didn't have to know. It was a good meeting. Okay. okay. Did anybody um, have any other questions about beach status issues before we move on? Are we good? Okay. Um, task from the Board of Commissioners. Can I go first? Yep. Okay. So you guys got a, in your agenda packet, a form that's the new form that comes forward to boards as far as taskers. Um, your directive um, is for a stay off the dunes informational flyer to go back to the BOC by May. Um, in the agenda setting meeting that Vicki and I had earlier in the week on Monday, um, we discussed a timeline that we think may work in regard to trying to get you guys to be able to look at a draft and then still meet um, the timelines of getting it before the board. So that would be, um, Vicki's going to talk through some options, but that timeline would be that after today, everybody sends five to ten bullets that you think should be included to me by the 5th morning of the 5th right? morning of the 5th morning of the 5th of march correct yes i'm going to turn that around into bullets to send to vicky by the 6th unless anybody doesn't agree with the process i think dean raised his hand and volunteered with um, some information to help work on that so the two of them could put together some information to bring a draft back. Um, it does say in the directive that it needs to be consistent with state and local law regulations. So I think that would allow time possibly for the planning and zoning department and the police department to review it before it comes to you in your March agenda packet. And remember that that meeting is moved up a week. That's what I wanted to say. Okay. What's the date of that meeting? March 21st? March 19th now. Right. Remember we moved up a week? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, when I went into the agenda meeting with Christy, we had like a tentative schedule, and um, one of the requirements of the new process is that um, we have to create a synopsis of what was discussed and have it approved at an advisory board committee public meeting. So, um, you know, we've, we've sort of backed up from there trying to figure out to make the May 19th BOC meeting what would need to happen. So what we're trying to do is to avoid having to call a special meeting because A, the time will be very tight and um, it's budget season, staff's busy, that kind of thing. So that's kind of where we're, we're working from. Um, I'm just going to kill the sound system That's in fine. there and just go with this. Okay. So you 
you've all got those in your packet, you should have gotten the directive and kind of the, the background and rules for the directives that uh, will be addressed in the future. Mm -hmm. um, so basically, we've been asked to find a way to help educate visitors and property owners about the fragility of our dunes. And um, I know that we've all talked about this before, the issues, and I know that you've probably heard from other individuals about some of the um, less desirable behavior that sometimes occurs. Um, and we all know why our dunes are important, you know, for environmental reasons, economic reasons, uh, protection for our, our basically the town's um, tax base, and um, how humans through their behavior can damage our dunes. So we're looking for a way then to deliver, to create that message and deliver it in a educational friendly manner besides our $500 fine signs. Um, so when this came out, Dean um, took a real interest in it, and he didn't think he was going to be able to be here today. So we met last week, and he shared all of his um, his thoughts, and he'd done a lot of research on it already. Um, and so Dean, jump in here, but I'm just going to summarize what was that in here. Okay. No, no, these are just my notes. Um, what Dean suggested is that we create um, several options for the commissioners to choose between. Um, they could choose all of them, they could choose none of them, but they would have like a menu to choose between. All the products would be customized to Holden Beach, um, and that we should keep in mind what is remembered by visitors and owners, what, what, what things they remember, and that we should make it personal to Holden Beach, um, that it's our Holden Beach, that kind of a tag. Um, some of the su suggested products would be um, a simple infographic with minimal text, uh, similar to the current rip current sign. Um, infographic with more details and verbiage, uh, similar to the C Grant version. I'm going to pass these down, and you guys take a look. And he's got all these different versions in here of different things. I'll pass it down, and you can all take a look. Um, I'm also going to pass down some that um, I had. The, the large blue one here, this is what Sea Grant, North Carolina produces. I talked to Spencer Rogers. I don't think it's, I don't think it would need to be edited. Now he can get us just the graphic file, so we can't edit it, but this really aims more at um, statewide um, lakes, streams, rivers, as well as the beach, so there's that. And here's another one from New Jersey that's really good. It's, it's got a crab and I'd swap it for a turtle, but... Um, <laughs> yeah, that one's really good, I saw that. So, um, you can kind of see there what Dean's... I'll go through the, the suggested list. Um, basically, they would go from very simple to more more information, um, like a one page of text. You know, thinking that some people are going to look at a picture and they're going to get it. You know, other people, you know, are technical and they want to read all the details sort of thing, but most people would tend to toss that one aside or, you know, put it near the, the round file kind of thing. Yeah. So we could give the commissioners, here's a really super simple thing that people are going to remember, give them a, a simple version, a middle of the road version, and a detailed version. And maybe we thought maybe the detailed version goes up on the town website or it's there for reference if, like, for example, the agencies want to hand it out kind of thing. But and put it in the folders? Yes. Yeah. Um, another thing that he's got in that packet you'll see is um, a, a packet of coloring sheets. For children that we would we would create and include with a four pack of crayons, and um, the thought that our, our our children like for recycling, oftentimes our children are what leads us, yes. you know, in, in adopting new behaviors. So um, that was a and Christy I had tip to Christy came up with a brilliant idea that we could also take those then to the concerts and distribute them mm -hmm. the little color book of crayons. Um, Again, a kid sits and colors that, and they hang it up on the refrigerator. They're going to remember it, so the next time that family walks out the beach, they're going to say, oh, there's, you know, yeah. they'll remember, hey, we shouldn't walk on the grasses and that sort of thing. Yeah. Or, or the 
kids run so often, hey, cut, you know, everybody else would say, get out of there. Kind of thing. It would be something simple to, you know, plant a seed and have them remember. Mm -hmm. And the one thing I uh, reiterated to Vicki during the meeting, but want to make sure that you guys cover during your presentation is, none of this was budgeted for. So just remember printing costs associated with whatever you're going to do and that that's not included in this year's budget. Yes. Right, so if we want to do magnets for all the rental house refrigerators, that costs something. Yeah. That's another great idea. Yeah, because they all have magnets on them with the important stuff on it. Um, So anyway, Dean had come up with the idea that we would have this menu of products with um, different levels of information available. Um, and then as far as distribution and communication, you can kind of see there on his packet where he's thinking, but um, they'd be available, uh, these products would be available, of course, at Town Hall for homeowners um, and independent rental um, individuals you know, who don't rent through one of the major agencies. Um, that we would also make sure that we we included the like an infographic or a coloring booklet um, in the rental agency packets and recognizing that would have to be next year since there's no budget this year and um, it from what I'm hearing they've already compiled their packets for this year you might know about coastal but um, I heard a lot of them have already completed that process. They could fly some there. <laughs> okay. Um, Christy and I kind of talked about, uh, we're thinking that no more of the big signs, that we have enough of the big metal signs right now. You know, that we don't, we're, we're kind of need, reaching maximum signage. You know what I'm saying? When you, in, when you enter, we've got um, signs. I, I think you get so much more with this type of a technique because I think that education gets you a lot further than threats do. So, not that they, there shouldn't be an impact for people being on the dims, but I'm not suggesting we don't do signs, but I'm saying that I think educating people helps them to buy in and makes it personal. Um, we'd also put a lot of the, um, the verbiage on the town's website and um, we're hoping that the town could do an email blast to distribute it to, um, to the community, because um, we also get people in who visit that are on the town's email list. Um, maybe a series of Facebook posts similar to what Brunswick County did for recycling to teach people how to recycle properly. I don't know if you guys saw that or not, but they did a series of, mm -hmm. of like weekly Facebook posts to educate mm -hmm. the citizens um, and then I talked about the, uh, the town concerts, we had those color books there. Um, that would reach a different demographic in some respects, in that sometimes the community comes to the con, the, the mainland community comes to the concerts, um, and are, they're also big users of our beach, so. And if we wanted to get really into this. Um, Mike and I attended a dune building workshop about a year ago now yeah. in Surf City that was sponsored by um, C. Grant, Steve Mercer was there. Um, I thought it was very educational and helpful, but we probably would not want to do that. That would take a while to set up. Dean, what do you want to add? I think you covered it. So the I idea is to come up with kind of a, a, not a smorgasbord, but a list of options for the commissioners to look over and discuss. Yes. So we're going to get five, my understanding is we're all going to get five bullets. You need to send five to ten bullets to Christy by the morning of the 5th. Okay. With, probably going to all be pretty similar. <laughs> right. So she's going to um, make sure that you know, we don't have a whole lot of dupes and stuff. We're also working around um, avoiding um, open meeting laws. So that's okay. why we're saying it's your own. Okay, good. Avoiding violation of open meeting laws. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> no, we're avoiding the laws. <laughs> Much better stated. Um, and so when you send those bullets, they also need to have the source because we're supposed to include the sources, 
with our um, with our information that we submit. So make sure you, if you pulled out something from a reference, okay. make sure you include what the reference is. So what would the goal of next March's meeting be then? But by then have we're going to get um, the, the points will all go into Christy. She's going to summarize them. Um, then we will, um, she'll send them to us. You and I will get together and formulate those into like a pseudo draft of plans. And those would have like references back to any examples that we find, that sort of thing? Okay. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. does, that make, does that, Christy, what we kind of came up with? It is, but the board needs to agree that they're okay with that, and if they want to go through the formal process of doing it in here instead, then we need to do something different. Yep. So, comments, discussion? Okay, um, a motion to adopt what we just discussed about putting the bullets together and consolidating them and coming back to our next meeting with a plan and discussing the plan further. Right. Okay. I make a motion. Okay. No second. Is there any discussion? Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? No. Motion carried unanimously. Um, you know, we're the first group to go through one of these um, requests from the Board of Commissioners, so um, I think we're kind of working our way through it. Can I just ask one question? Should I know we're going to do the bullets. Um, should we be thinking about options of presentation like Dean mentioned earlier? Should we be thinking about methodologies? Yes. And would we discuss that at the next meeting? Sure, send us everything. Okay, all right, good. on the task from the Board of Commissioners. We'll move on to number six. Inland Beach Protection Board announcements. We good? Okay. Um, Brunswick Shoreline Consortium's next meeting is March 18th. ASBPA is March 24th through 26th in D.C. Um, and there's a couple of people attending that um, from the town. None of us, I don't think we're attending that. Oh, shoot. Um, the Byways Conference is April 20th through 21st. Our next meeting, or I'm sorry, the next MOA meeting is in May, and I don't think Coley has set that yet. Is that correct? No, they didn't mention anything about a date or anything. Okay. Um, the next IBPB meeting, our meeting, is March 19th, and if you recall, we changed the date because of the conflict with ASBPA, or possible conflict with ASBPA. Um, I also wanted to throw in there um, the SAC study update. There's a webinar on March 5th. If anybody's interested in sitting in on that, I'll send you the email. Are you familiar with what I'm talking about, the SAC study? You know how they did the NACS study for the Northeast after Sandy? Yes. And it was, they felt like it was very successful. Um, they're now applying that, they're taking that same idea and doing the Southeast, the southeast from. Louisiana up to, I think it's Virginia. And so we're included in that, and they've been working on it, and they're going to have these calls quarterly. So if anybody's interested in sitting in on that, let me know. Um, what date was that? March 5th. I believe it's 10 a.m. 10 to 11.30, I believe. That's right. Here is the um, draft that we need to modify of the uh, monthly update to the Board of Commissioners. And here's what I've got, so you guys, as per usual, jump in. 
Um, the Inland Beach Protection Board met February 27th and the following issues and topics were discussed and addressed. Status of the beach and inlet staff provided an overview of current and future projects, efforts and conditions, and issues relative to the beach strand and inlets. A copy of the Assistant Town Manager's report to the IBPB is attached. BOC Dune Directive. The Board reviewed the task sent to the IBPB from the February BOC meeting regarding dune protection. Dune protection issues and possible approaches were discussed. Members will submit five to ten ideas with sources by March 5th. These will be compiled into a draft for the next IBPB meeting. Other updates. The keep off the dune signs, which were approved in the adopted budget, have arrived and are pending installation. We didn't, we didn't talk about that. that. <laughs> now you know. Um, Member Pearson distributed a memo on the February MOA meeting, including updates from the Corps of Engineers on planned shallow draft inlet work. Meetings, Brunswick County Shoreline Protection. The next meeting will be March 18th, 2020. The next IBPB meeting will be March 19th, 2020. Attachment uh, one, assistant, man assistant town manager's report to the IBPB. So what else would you like to add or delete from this? Anything? You're going to take the sentence out about the science. science. Yeah. She took it out already. Anything else? Is there a motion to approve this? Make a motion to approve the consensus report. Okay. Is there a second? Second. Any more discussion? Um, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Was Aye. that, Tim, was that you that seconded? Yes. Okay. Now we're to the point of public comments. Are there any public comments from the public? May I approach? Yep, please. Okay. Give your name and um, address for the record. Okay, um, I'm Captain Kane Fairclough. I'm the president of the Lockwood uh, Inlet Association. And you are Dean Thomas. Dean, you here. I'll be a little hand sanitizer since we have coronavirus going around. <laughs> that way everybody knows I'm nice and clean. Yeah. So Dean, good to meet you. Tim, oh, of course, uh, sir, for your children. Vicky, of course, I right. get to see you. Good to see you. Hey, Mike, how you doing? Good. Good to see you. Rhonda. Hey, Rhonda. Uh, Christy and... Mike Sullivan. Mike Sullivan. And Pat Wachowski. Pat, good to see you guys. Um, so, when our group started, uh, Lock Valley Inlet was in the worst, situ worst case situation of everybody living a lifetime. Um, and we were able to take it as a community to the best it had ever been in. Everybody's lifetime. So that was a tremendous feat that Oak Island, Bowman Beach, Brunswick County, state of North Carolina, and all the residents and citizens did. Unfortunately, uh, Hurricane Dorian, as we spoke of earlier, like with storms in the Northeast, you know, put a lot, a lot of sand into the inlet, and then we've been playing catch up right now. Um, it's in really, really bad shape, and uh, hopefully, April 1st, if the Corps holds to what they say they're going to get here, we're going to have it um, opened up for, uh, for Easter which is, you know, huge for our tourism here at Holy Beach. Um, uh, environmentally, we're kind of suffering right now because we are getting a lot of rain, and with the inlet being in bad shape, you know, it's, it's the Lockerbie River and estuaries aren't flushing as good, so it's definitely hurting our, our shellfish and fish population and whatnot. Um, but unfortunately, we're at the mercy of the Corps and their aging resources, which is, it is what it is. Um, uh, the hopper dredge, when we've had the hopper dredge, it seems like that worked the best for us and it held the longest. Uh, our group politically is rallying harder and harder and harder to try to get us more access to hopper dredges. The, they have two. One of them is going on the hill at maybe six months, maybe a year. The other one, it seems like it's, um, to quote Steve Sonner, Deputy County Manager, uh, it's, we can never get it here. You know, in the, in the future, it's like, gonna happen like never. Um, so anyway, that's, that's, a, that's, a, that's a problem. Um, I think that's something that we need to work on at a, at a state level and a federal level. And uh, of course it's going to you know, require the support of the towns and, and the county or whatnot as we do this. Um, the main thing I'm here today is I, I was encouraged uh, by several of the property owners here on Holden Beach to uh, talk to the town and uh, talk to you guys. Um, I'm a fish and charter captain uh, and Ollie Roger Fish and Charters and we operate out of Captain Pete's here at 103 South Shore Drive. 
time, so I do have a vested interest here on the island. Um, the Carolina Beach Inlet Association, they had Dr. Dumas from UNCW do them an economic impact study um, years past. It's a great, great, great tool to paint a picture of what their inlet means to the public. Um, last year, they also came out with their real estate uh, value study. And uh, I met with Dr. Dumas this past week. We are working to get one for the Lockwood Valley Inlet. Um, he has his calendar open in July that he can do that for us. Um, I'm currently raising funds. It's going to be about 9000 uh, If we have just Dr. Dumas do it under his name as a consultant, or it's going to be around 12000 if we do it through UNCW. Um, our association has $2,000 right now appropriated that we would pitch into it. Um, I've spoken with Cynthia from the Fresno County Association of Realtors, and she's uh, approaching uh, the National Association of Realtors to see about getting a grant to help pay for it. Um, we are accepting some donations from private individuals, and uh, some of the homeowners asked me to come to the town and see if the town would be willing to uh, pitch in on this study. Um, so I felt it would be appropriate to bring it to you guys, and then uh, you guys can take it to the commissioners, and if you'd like for me to speak to commissioners also about it at one of the town meetings, I, I don't have a problem with that. I'd, I'd love to. Um, one quick interesting thing that they found out uh, in Carolina Beach, and this was just the waterfront properties that um, are related to the Carolina Beach Inlet, if that inlet was closed and go away, um, they would look at about $45,000 in uh, property depreciation per, per, property. per property. Yeah. Um, right now with those waterfront properties, uh, they bring in about $450,000 to the county in uh, tax revenue. Um, so it's a pretty significant number, and when we look at our area, it's a little different. Um, our numbers, of course, will be different, but you know, when I think about Lock Valley Inlet and property values, I just don't think about the waterfront properties, you know, here on, on the waterway, but I mean, it really affects the whole island and affects the mainland, too. So I plan to talk to the county about it. Um, we're going to talk to our neighbors at Island about it also, and then uh, we'd love for you guys at Whole Beach to participate. We'd like for you to be a partner with us on this. Yeah, I feel like it's a, it's a good tool, and it's something that it'll be something that we'll have as a town. You guys have done an excellent job at getting behind this and supporting it. Um, and every election cycle, it's uh, it's going to be, for for the ongoing of time, it's going to be a, you know, an ongoing thing. We're going to have new commissioners right now, our commissioners on our side. But we can have uh, election cycles where we have commissioners come in, they're familiar with it, and it's a whole re-education process. So this is a great education tool. Um, I have copies of theirs. Uh, if you guys would like, if you want to provide me with your email address, probably the best way to do it is I can email you the link, and you can pull it up and, and review it, and read the documents and whatnot. And it'd be, it's good for you to have for your for your personal personal you know, files or whatnot too. Yeah. And you um, are you talking about getting both the economic Ron, overall economic? Ron, Ron, I'm, sorry. I'm sorry. I can't ask the question. Um, I'm going to help this board a little bit. We're going to. Uh, or we want to get economic impact study and the real estate study done. Um, technically, they don't have to respond to public comment. Okay. And they cannot allocate any any funding as an independent board. Mm -hmm. So I think that your best course of action is to come to the Board of Commissioners meeting if you have a request. Okay. Um, I just want to help them before they start engaging with back and forth commentary with you at the moment. Okay. Now I've right. given you that. Now, can Advice. we answer some questions? Or, or, uh... They can ask questions, correct? I was just going to ask a question about whether you, you mentioned two separate studies, correct. an overall economic study and then a real estate study. Are you talking about trying to do both of those for we would. I think it's important to have both. Okay. Um, and basically, the kind of way he broke it down, I asked him, you know, one or the other, and he said each one was about $5,000. And then I was going to ask you where I could get access to the ones that you already have from mm -hmm. Carolina. Yeah, yeah, I have a, I can email them to you. Um, and I have a couple copies here. I don't know if you guys wanted to run some copies. I could leave it here at the town. Um, you guys are welcome to do that. Um, whatever works. You know, it's easiest for y'all. No. But uh, I, I think, how long is like this board? Two, couple years? How long? Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, I mean, and that's just a good testament of our town, what our commitment to our beaches and to our inlets. Um, you know, I think it's great what you guys are doing, and I really appreciate y'all volunteering. Um, because you're homeowners, you know, and so we want you, you know, to have you on board with us. Anybody else have questions? Did you mention that you had a previous one for, for here? Didn't there's you? never been one done here. Okay. Yeah, there, we haven't had one done here. Um, Dr. Dumas uh, has done one for Carolina Beach, and, and that's that's the first one there. Um, another thing we're working is with our neighbors up in Oregon Inlet to try to help them get more organized because um, it's a mess up there. Um, so how large is your group? Really and predominantly, who are the members? Uh, the members are 
are from everywhere. You know, Holden Beach, uh, Brunswick County, uh, Southern North Carolina, vacationers that come down and, and, and stay you know, and have real houses. Um, we're about 150 members strong right now. Um, you know, it grows. And it's uh, it's uh, we you can go to LockwoodInland.org is, is our website, and uh, you know, we have different levels of membership or whatnot. Um, but yeah, we formed about I guess we've been around about two years ourselves. Yeah, but it's it's uh, maybe actually three, maybe about three now. But um, we're an educational group, so you know that's our job. I mean, it's you know we have new commissioners come in, we have to update them, and it, and it was. When we first started, uh, you know, it, it was maybe 50 50, maybe two thirds against spending money as far as the county on Lockwood Folly Inlet. And um, now, when it comes to votes, it seems like it's almost like a unanimous vote. So we've come a long ways with, with the support there. So, uh, you know, we have a great group of commissioners that work good together, and, and, and hopefully, uh, you know, they'll be around for a little while. But of course, election cycles, you know, people get tired of politics or, or get, don't get reelected or, or whatnot. So. Anyway, support a thing. Yeah. Thank you for letting me speak. Appreciate it. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah. Um, any other comment? I have, a, I have a question. Christy? Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. On the uh, grants that Mike was talking about, does the town have a plan to request the grant up to $2.5 million? Or is there any projected or project in the works that we may want? to ask for, for the grant line? Um, David and I briefly discussed it when we saw it on the slides. I was at a conference last week, from, so I wasn't able to go to that meeting. Um, we want to read the paperwork that comes out on the 28th and see what the stipulations are and then see if we have anything that matches. Okay. Um, I don't, with, without reading the stipulations on it, I don't want to comment past that, but we do plan to review it and see if we have anything that falls that would, would be project-wise. Uh, along those same lines, I had a question. There was another, when it came out earlier, um, resiliency grants. Is that the same one? I haven't seen any other resiliency grants. Um, I know that there was some economic development grants that were put forth by COG and we've met with them um, regarding anything that we, what our needs might be because they're putting together something regionally. Um, but I haven't seen any additional resiliency stuff that sticks in my mind. Okay, I got something up on my, my desktop right now. I will send it to you. For some reason I thought it was um, strictly resiliency and the thing that came to mind was it was water and sewer um, was the targets. So um, I immediately thought of the sewer system. Because those are definitely, I mean, what we're doing is resiliency for our sewer system. Right? That's true. Okay. Um, if there's no further, further public comment, um, would you like to adjourn? I'll make a motion to adjourn. I'll second.